Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about text mining and some of the techniques we use to extract textual data. So first, let us look at the why, what and how to understand an outline to today's talk. First, why. So why are we learning this module? This module is important if you want to extract information from textual data. In the past few lectures, we have seen the huge amount of social media data that we can use to obtain public opinion regarding certain issues like gender-based violence. In that case, it is essential to learn some basic text processing methods that we can leverage to get this information. So what do we plan to achieve by uh, text mining? Using these, uh, we can extract information from the text, both at the document level, as well as fine-grained information, as we will see from some of the methods we discuss in today's class. So how do we do this? To understand this, we first need to break down the problem into different levels. We can extract information at the word level, at the sentence level, and at the document level. In today's module, we will look use the bottom-up approach and focus on the word level method. As we can see in this image, there are several different areas that utilize text mining. These areas of computer science have become increasingly important due to the rapid growth of digitized information, social networks, and mobile computing. For example, consider the area of semantic web. As an example, consider Wikipedia that has about 6 million terms that are continuously brought up to date. It has references is rich in structure and can be exploited as a knowledge base to get more information from web content. All these areas overlap for most applications today, such as the one I will use as an example with the, of that of social media to glean information on gender-based violence. That particular application, for example, uses pretty much all of the areas described in this uh, Slide. First, let's also look at a practical example that we see almost daily of what we can do using text mining methods. So this is just a snippet of a Gmail uh, uh, a mail. And as we can see here, uh, Gmail uses text mining to automatically detect dates that can then get added to your Google Calendar. And the point to note here is that sometimes it can still make an error when the date is not in the specified format, in which case you have to manually put in the date and specify the time. But you can see how much we are already relying on these automated text mining methods as a part of our everyday life. In the video module two, we have seen how the inverted index maps words to its location across different documents. To recall the major steps in the inverted index, first we uh, select all the documents to be indexed. Then we tokenize the text. We'll see more about this word tokenization in the next few slides. And then we use some pre-processing steps to filter the text before computing this inverted index. And then finally we index the documents that each term occurs in. So in this lecture, we will see how we can pre-process this data to achieve better precision and improve our information retrieval using text processing methods. So specifically in today's module, we will look at these points, how to do point number two and three. So the first thing we need to do before we extract this textual feature or pre-process the, the text, we have to identify the unit blocks of text. For example, if the corpus is a set of books, we may want to choose the chapters as the units instead of individual books, depending on the level of granularity we seek. In the context of social media, normally we use the individual tweets as the document units, in case of Twitter, and the Facebook posts, of Facebook. Once we do that, 
we need to extract the text content that we will then process. For example, if we have XML files, the markup may need to be ignored since we are only looking at the textual data. Similarly, we have to uh, consider the encoding schemes. For example, in the UTF coding, to extract these character strings from the uh, encoded information. In today's module, we will mostly look at the word level properties that we ha can help us analyze text data. We'll also look briefly at word segmentation before discussing how we can utilize this pre-processed data. For the word level properties, in this word, in this module, we will look at tokenization, stop words, normalization, dematization, stemming, and frequent engrams. So let's begin with the first one, tokenization. So far, we've used this idea without formally defining it. So what is, what are tokens? Given a character sequence and a defined document unit, tokenization is the task of chopping it up into pieces, into these smaller blocks called tokens, while throwing away certain characters such as punctuations or special characters. So here's an example. I am learning text processing and I love it. So how many texts, how many tokens are here? How many words? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have eight tokens here. And what about types? Do we still have nine types? Well, because the word like the word I has been repeated here, we would actually have eight unique types. So here you can differentiate between tokens and types for the given uh, sentence. Stop words. Sometimes some extremely common words, which would appear to be of little value in helping document selection based on keyword search, can be excluded from the vocabulary entirely. These words are called stop words. This can help reduce storage space. And examples of those are we and the are at it that. Most of them are mostly articles or pronouns. So excluding these can help save space, computation time, and not affect the information retrieval. However, we need to be careful because in some special cases, these articles may be crucial and removing them may affect the performance negatively. In general, it is a good idea to remove stop words and test the system. So for example, in this specific example, I am learning text processing and I love it. We see that there are three stop words based on the router stop word collection of 25 words. These are am, and, and it. And again, as before, uh, I have references to these different links you can look at to understand these uh, different uh, terminologies better. So please uh, have, take a look. Normalization. In data manipulation, I'm sure you have seen examples of normalization where you rescale the data to remove bias. Often in machine learning techniques, we normalize the data by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation of the variable so that no single input gets undue importance. In this case also, a common technique is called case, fold, is called case folding, where all the uppercase letters are converted to lowercase. For in this example, where I'm learning text processing, and I love it, with sentence being capital, we could convert that to lowercase so that we can have more, an easier comparison with, say, other words which, have, which don't have capital letters. In other approaches, we can normalize all the abbreviations to a common form, such as in this example, for the different ways we could write the abbreviation for doctor. There's D, capital D, R, dot. In one case, the dot punctuation is missing, or both are in capital letters, or none of the two are in capital letters. However, again, it is important to note that things get 
trickier in informal texts since there are more abbreviations used in social media or SMS like low LOL or AWOL where these words first need to be recognized as abbreviation before you normalize them. Now let's look at another way where we can pre-process our uh, textual data. So stemming. The goal of stemming is to convert the word into its base form. For example, stemming would convert the words compression and compresses into the base compress. By doing this, we can find more similarities between documents if they both contain different forms of the base word. Since after stemming, the base word would appear as a common term for both these documents. To give you an idea of how stemming works, a popular stemming algorithm, the Porter's algorithm, has some of these rules. For example, it converts words ending with SSES to just SS. For example, the word dresses would get converted to dress. Another one would be converting IES to I. Now you can see here that it would convert the stories STORIES to story STORI with I at the end. So you see it kind of distorted the word a little. So, you know, you have to take into account that this would happen as well. And then there are some trickier rules where you remove for the words ending with ing, you remove the ing part of it only if a vowel exists at the preceding characters. For example, for walking would become walk, but the word sing would remain as it is. Lemmatization. Now, this is also a way to get it to its base form, but it's a more complex process which involves more natural language processing techniques and the knowledge base to obtain the base form of the word. A lemmatization system would handle matching car to cars along with matching car to automobile. In a more traditional search engine, matching car to cars would be handled by stemming, but matching car to automobile would be handled by a separate system. Typically, stemmers are easier to implement and run faster, and the reduced accuracy may not matter for certain uh, applications. But you also see that for a word like walking, both of these would get identified as walk by both stemming and lemmatization methods. As for when you would use one or the other, it's a matter of how your application depends on getting the meaning of a word in context correct. If you're doing machine translation, you probably want lemmatization to avoid mistranslation. If you're doing information retrieval over a billion documents, with 99% of your queries ranging from one to three words, you can settle for stemming. So again, it's a trade-off between speed and accuracy. N grammar. In the field of computational linguistics and probability, an n gram is a contiguous sentence of n items from a given sequence of text or speech. The idea is that words do not normally pair in random order but in groups. In the limiting case, we can look at each token or in our examples a word by itself. That is called the unigram. So we can look at each word by itself. A bigram now is every sequence of two adjacent elements in a string of tokens. You can think of it as a windowing technique where you put your window around two words at a time while you're moving down your sentence. So we can then use the dependency of each of these words on the previous token. This can be used as features for machine learning if certain document units contain specific sets of biograms that can help distinguish between the other document units and hence be used for classification. So in the example, I am learning text processing and I love it. The unigrams would be each of these words by itself. I separately am 
learning and so on and so forth. For bigrams now, you would have the group of the two contiguous words. So I am is a bigram, am learning, learning text, and so on. Similarly, for trigrams, you would have I am learning as a trigram. And then you could go on to n-grams to recognize these word associations. Word segmentation. Often when you have done these pre-processing uh, word methods, sometimes you lose the space, the character space between words, and then you might want to have to do this word segmentation to split out these words again. So in this uh, slide, we look at an example of um, uh, the maximum matching algorithm where you first start the pointer to the beginning of the string. So let's look at the example and follow these steps. So you put your pointer at the first one, T, and you start, find the longest word that matches with any dictionary word. You need a dictionary in this case. So when you have it here, you will start with T, and you'll see that the first one, for example, would be the, the longest word that could possibly you could get. So once you've identified the word the, now you move the pointer to the next alphabet, S, and then identify the next longest identified word. So you, you would have S. So you could have star, but you would also have stars. Then you would take the longest word, so you would choose stars. And then now you would again start, put your pointer at A. And so then you would get the stars are shining. And so this is a greedy algorithm, as you can see. And again, there are errors depending, first of all, of course, on your dictionary. And then there could be multiple ways in which you could fix the, uh, or segment out your sentence. But so you could have different possible answers. So right now we have looked at some features. Again, this is just a taste giving you an idea of the different text processing methods, very basic text processing methods, like n-grams and how you would first pre-process it by, say, removing stop words, by normalizing your data. So now that you can extract these features, you can now use this data for some kind of a classification. For example, in our case of uh, detecting gender-based violence, we can now use these features like n-grams to uh, uh, then create a, a classifier of using machine learning to be able to find out which tweets are relevant to gender-based violence techniques and which are not. So now, this, now that you have an idea of text processing, we will look at some more examples in class, and we'll also look at parts of speech to be able to uh, get opinion or to get more intent mining out of these uh, uh, textual data. So that's all for this module. Thank you.